Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And as you can see, this is the all new Sierra blue color. It also comes in gold, silver, and graphite, just like last year. And it starts similarly at $1,099 and goes up to $1,599. It starts at 128 gigabytes and goes all the way up to one terabyte if you're looking for that amount of storage. Now let's go ahead and unbox this and take a look. Now this is the Sierra blue, like I said before, and it's the 512 gigabyte model. So it's not the one terabyte, but it's more than enough storage for me. In fact, I currently have 256 gigabytes and I don't use even half of that. Now let's go ahead and open this up. So we'll take the top off here. Here we go. Oh, there's another one at the bottom that I missed. There we go. We'll take the top off and you can see there is the new Sierra blue. Now this blue looks pretty nice. We'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. And inside the box, we have our paperwork here. Like we would expect a SIM card ejector tool, some paperwork with warranty information, and also an Apple sticker. Now inside we have our USB C to lightning cable. So we'll take a look at that quickly. Here we go. There's a USB-C to lightning that's included and there is no charger. Now, if you do want a charger, that's where today's sponsor comes in. Anchor is the official charging sponsor of Zolotech, and this is the Nano Pro with Power IQ 3.0. It works flawlessly with your brand new iPhone or other device. It's super compact if you've never used these, and they're also 20 watts. So that means you'll charge up to about 50% in 25 minutes, and that's 45% smaller than Apple's stock charger. It also uses Anchor's patented Active Shield to monitor temperature and adjust current to make sure the phone is not getting hot. They come in glacier blue, cool lavender, arctic white, and black ice. And I'll leave a link to them in the description below, and thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. Now let's go ahead and take the wrapper off the front of the display, and then we'll take a closer look at the phone itself. So this Sierra blue color is really nice. And here is the 12 pro max to compare with the 13 pro max. So you can see the glossy edge is a little bit different and the color overall, this is Pacific blue with the 12 pro max and the new Sierra blue with the 13 pro max. So it changes a little bit in light. It's almost a blue or slate color at times. Sometimes it reminds me of the floors in Apple stores when they first opened. So sort of a granite, that's sort of a bluish tint. It just depends on the way the light hits it. Now, as far as the outside edge, let's take a look at that in comparison with the 12 Pro Max. Now you can see on the side that the power sleep wake button compared with the 12 Pro Max is basically in the same place. And the millimeter wave antenna is very similar as well. It may be shifted ever so slightly or be a little bit smaller also. Now also on the back, you can see the camera bump here. It looks to protrude a little bit further, but it's not as big as I was expecting on the top. It's pretty much the same on the other side. You can see that the SIM card tray is in a slightly different place, but the volume sleep wake buttons are in a similar place. So everything's fairly similar there. And then on the bottom, let's take a look at that. You can see that the speakers and microphone and lightning port are all in the same place. So everything looks familiar there. Now the overall weight is a little bit heavier. It's 8.46 ounces or 240 grams compared with 8.03 ounces or 228 grams. So it's about a half an ounce or so heavier and you can definitely feel that extra weight. It also seems to be maybe a hair thicker ever so slightly thicker, maybe not. It's very hard to tell, but it may be ever so slightly thicker. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the display as it should have a smaller notch. So let's turn it on so we can get a better look at the notch itself. It's already picking up a bunch of fingerprints, but we'll turn it on here. We'll get to the setup screen and then I'll compare the displays itself. So here you can see the notch. It's definitely narrower on the iPhone 13 pro max, and it's maybe a little bit taller as well. So that may bother some people that it protrudes into the display a little bit, but the display this year is similar as far as its overall resolution and size at 6.7 inches diagonally, 2,778 by 1,284 with 458 pixels per inch. It's got ProMotion at up to 120 Hertz. So we'll take a look at that and can go up to a thousand nits with normal brightness. 
It has HDR, True Tone, and has Ceramic Shield on it as well. And judging based on the iPhone 12 Pro Max, it's held up pretty well over the past year. So Ceramic Shield is much better than before, and it does have haptic touch. I think 3D touch is pretty much gone. Now let's go ahead and set this up. I'll set it up, and then we'll come back and talk about the internals. Now I've already put in the password of the previous phone. It wants me to set up Face ID now, which is one of the first steps. And before we do that, let's take a look at the SIM card tray because I've heard heard that it doesn't come with a SIM card inside. So it looks like it doesn't have a SIM card. So you can see there, there's no SIM card in it. You can move your SIM card over, activate an E or an eSIM if you'd like to, but it doesn't look like it comes pre-installed. Now it may, if you pick it up from a carrier. Now I'll set this up with face ID. We'll hit get started. You'll just move your head around like this and then usually the other direction. Seems to work just as well or better than the previous versions. We'll hit continue and then we'll hit continue again. Now it's asking me if I want to transfer from my phone or download from iCloud. We'll just go to other options for now just to get this set up so we can take a look at the camera and more. Now, while we're waiting for it to set up, internally it has an A15 Bionic CPU. It's the new chipset with a six core CPU with two performance cores and four efficiency cores. It also has a new five core GPU, which is an extra core over the 13 and the 13 mini. It also has a new 16 core neural engine, and I believe six gigabytes of RAM, we'll have to check that out a little bit later. Now we're at the point where it's asking me if I want to transfer apps and data. I'll hit don't transfer and we'll agree to the terms. And I just want to set it up as a new phone basically so we can get to the main screen. Now the next option says make this your new iPhone and it shows different backups and different options that you have from the previous phone. So we'll just hit continue. And then it says, keep your iPhone up to date. We'll hit continue again. Now you can see the next step says Apple beta software program. My previous phone had the beta installed and it's asking me if I want to carry that over to this phone. I don't want to continue on the beta program for this one. And it says, welcome to your iPhone. So now we're at the home screen. Now let's go into settings and see what version we have. So if we go into general, then about, you'll see that we have iOS 15 on here with build number 19A341. Someone asked in my previous video, if we check for a software update, is there an update? And sure enough, there is. So you will need to install an update when you receive this, since they have basically what was the release candidate build built into this, at least when I received it anyway. Now, as far as wallpapers, let's take a look at those. And we'll go to choose a new wallpaper and you'll see we have some live wallpapers. Now these are specific to the pro. So if we go into the blue one here, press and hold, you'll see that it moves. We'll let off here. I kind of like that one. So we'll set that one. It set the wallpaper, but you get the same sort of things for all the different colors if you want them. So this looks pretty nice as well. All of them look pretty good. And this just gives you an idea of what they look like. So again, for the different wallpaper. Now the iPhone 13 Pro Max and Pro have ProMotion, and so that means it can ramp the display refresh rate up to 120 hertz or down to 10 hertz. So it just makes it super smooth. If you ever use this on an iPad Pro, you'll know what I mean, but just scrolling is incredibly smooth and it works really, really well. Now next to an iPhone 12 Pro Max, Let's see if we can bring that in here. I don't know that you're going to see the scrolling difference between the two, but they, there definitely is a difference on the 13 pro max. So it makes it a little bit better that way. And the display is more efficient. Now also the display temperature is definitely a little bit cooler than last year. So where some people complained that the iPhone 12 pro max had more of a warm display, it seems like it's a little bit cooler. So I have the, the brightness, up to about the same. And you can see, I also have True Tone turned off on both. If I turn True Tone on on both, you'll see the left display is definitely much warmer than the display on the right with the new 13 Pro Max. I prefer it to be a little cooler, so I think many people will really appreciate that on the 13 Pro Max. Now, as far as PWM or the way it controls brightness, well, I would expect this to have it since it's an OLED display. That's how it controls brightness, by flickering the display faster and slower. and if you bring the brightness up, it flickers faster. Now you can't see this with your eyes, but it can bother people's eyes. And I'll have to let you know after using this for a while, if it bugs my eyes. Now, as far as the cameras go, they've changed them a little bit in the front 
in the sense that they've moved it to the left to make room for the smaller notch. They've moved the camera to the left and then moved the speaker up to the top. So all of the face ID sensors are in the notch there as well. Now this camera is not really any different than previous years. It's a 12 megapixel camera with an F 2.2 aperture and it can record 4k 60 Dolby vision HDR. It can also do the new cinematic modes and also has other options as well. So we'll take a look at those in just a moment. As far as the rear cameras go, these are all new sensors. In fact, they're supposed to be very impressive. Of course, I'll have to try them out myself. And I've noticed that it does feel very top heavy because of these sensors. They have sensor shift stabilization and they are triple 12 megapixel sensors. We have a telephoto F 2.8. We also have a wide F 1.5 and we have an ultra wide F 1.8. So all of those are new and we can also shoot in macro Apple pro raw. And then in the future, we'll actually have the option to record ProRes as well with video. Now we have three X optical zoom this year on the telephoto lens and also six X digital zoom. And again, that 4k Dolby vision HDR at 60 frames per second. So if we go into the camera, you'll see the first thing it shows is photographic styles. So we can choose our style and this allows us to customize the way the photo looks before we even take it. And then it will just sort of default to this style. So if we prefer rich contrast, standard style, vibrant style, warm style, cool style. And then if we use cool, we can go into this. If we tap on the button here and tap down here, we have the option for tone and warmth. We can change this based on whatever we'd like. So if I bring in the 12 pro max behind it, we can change it so that it looks a little bit different and then it will stay that way. And you can see that on the display there. So maybe I want it a little bit warmer and then, or the tone that color. And then we want it a little bit rich, warm. It even gives it a name there as well and saves it for the next time you snap a photo. So that's something that's new. Now this also has a macro mode as well as we get closer to an object. So it should jump. You can see that jump right there. It jumps to sort of a macro mode as we get really close. It's very hard with reflections, but this gives you a general idea snap a picture there and you can see how close we can get. We can zoom in and there's pretty decent detail there as well. You can see all the dust particles and everything. And maybe we can get even closer with, let's say, let's say this cloth here that we clean the pro display XDR with. So let's see how close we can get to that. There we go. So we can see the individual fibers of that cloth as we zoom in. So that's pretty impressive. You can see how detailed that is. So we have that new macro mode built into the iPhone, the 13 pro and the 13 pro max. So that part's really impressive. Also, we have cinematic mode where it will actually pick the focus between people and objects. And you'll see it's an HDR. So it's super bright right now. So you can't really see it as the, the temperature goes down, but it's really nice as far as having all those options. And I can't wait to try this out a little bit more. Now the back is getting a little bit warm as I was using the camera since I've just set it up, but nothing really hot, just like we used to have with the 12 pro max. So it is warm. I would expect it to be warm doing a lot of background processes, but it's not overly warm. So for those of you concerned, also the battery is much larger in this one because we have a redesigned interior so we can get up to 2.5 hours longer battery life with the 13 pro max over the 12 pro max, which should be really impressive. Also, it has IP 68 certification, six meters for up to 30 minutes. And let's take a look at the magnets inside. See if they're any different than what we have on the 12 pro max. So this is magnet paper and I'll bring in the 12 pro max and you can see the layout's a little bit different with the speakers here. The speakers are a little bit different and maybe the magnets are a little bit larger, but basically the same as we have our MagSafe adapter, but that just gives you an idea. You can see the different camera modules with the sensor shift stabilization and more. Now, as far as Ram internally, let's take a look at that. And you can see we have six gigabytes, 5.53 gigabytes. So it does have six gigabytes of Ram just like last year. So not too much of a difference there. The main change here is that promotion display, as well as the updated cameras that should be much better in low light, especially the ultra wide. So we have that telephoto and ultra wide, and I'll be trying those in the review. Now we also have stereo speakers as well. So you have your speaker at the top and on the bottom, let's see if we can try a video, see if it's any different. So here's a comparison I made of the iPhone cameras last year compared to all of the different models available. Let me move the microphone so you can hear what these speakers sound like.
Now the speakers sound pretty good. This new speaker at the top puts out an even sound with the bottom speaker, so it sounds pretty close to stereo, so no issues there, and it goes nice and loud. Now as far as 5G, it's available for more carriers this year, but millimeter wave is still not available in all countries. It really depends on where you live. And we also have the typical Wi-Fi 6. So 802.11 ABGN, AC and AX, and also Bluetooth 5.0. So that's it for the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now I'll be using it for a week or so. I like to use each phone for about a week before I do a full review if I can. And just to give you a real world use case of what it's like overall. And I'm using the forward facing camera of the 13 Pro Max right now to record this video. I'm not using any external microphone and it's just the 4k video from the forward-facing camera. In fact the beginning of this video was recorded with an iPhone 13's forward-facing camera but with an external microphone. So this should just give you a general idea of what to expect with these forward-facing cameras and I can't wait to try out the cameras a little bit more later on. Now if there's something you haven't seen in other reviews that you'd like me to check out and let you know about let me know in the comments below. And thanks to our channel sponsor Anchor and be sure to check out the Anchor Nano Pro. I'll link it in the description like I said before. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.